The creaking of the oarlocks was barely audible as the sound of Thorvald's ram's horn echoed through the craggy fjord. The future was staring us right in the face. After all those sleepless nights, this was going to change everything. No, this wasn't right. Her heart could never belong to the Duke. She was Tristan's. She had always been Tristan's. Turn any time into story time with Audible. Your first audiobook is free. To cover or not to cover? To cover or not to cover? That is the question. And that's what we're going to be explaining today. Head coverings. Nobody's wearing them. In the Trinitarian Church, they feel like they don't have to wear them. But in the Oneness Church, there is always somebody wearing a head covering. And when we're talking about somebody, we're talking about that predominantly we're talking about women um, and so today we're going to go into um, the history of the early church and we're going to go into um, the, the Bible um, and we're going to give you the differences between the two the Trinitarian and versus the oneness the, these two perspectives we're going to go into those things so the, the Trinitarian is pretty much simple simple especially if you live in um, um, the Western society in the Trinitarian Church, um, basically, they say we don't have to wear head coverings anymore. <clears throat> Forget what Apostle Paul said. You do not have to wear head coverings anymore. Your hair is your covering. Your hair is your covering. And because your hair is your covering, you don't have to wear head coverings anymore. And um, and then cut and dry. Boom. That's it. Boom. That's it. Cut and dry. That's what they give you. Uh, and the oneness church, you won't you won't find that too much. You won't find that too much. The reason why you won't find that too much is because the oneness church is really a byproduct of how things used to be before um, Constantine began to change everything, and, and the Romans accepted uh, Christianity as their um, you know their. Uh, um, state of uh, religious state so uh, before all those changes you had people wearing head coverings and, um, and they don't anymore and it's just like what's going on here so let's go let's go ahead and um, get into it um, I'm reading from a complete Jewish Bible and you can follow me along on a um, King James Bible so let's go from the biblical perspective and then we'll go um, to some research about head coverings in the early church and then we will um, hear from a oneness preacher about head coverings and then we'll end the show and hey listen if you want to um, email me about uh, the, the things the, the topics that I'm talking about email me at um, Douglas Derek Lattimore at gmail.com that's Douglas D-O-U-G-L-A-S Derek D-E-R-R-I-C-K Lattimore, L-A-T-T-I-M-O-R-E at gmail.com. All one word, Douglas Derek Lattimore at gmail.com. 
go ahead and send me an email whether you agree with me whether you don't agree with me send me an email let's discuss it all right here we go um first corinthians the 11th chapter this is the apostle paul this is what he says he says try to imitate me even as i myself try to imitate the messiah now i praise you because you have remembered everything i told you and observed the traditions just the way i passed them to you but i want you to understand that the head of every man is the messiah and the head of of a wife is her husband and the head of the messiah is god every man who prays or prophesies wearing something down over his head brings shame to his head but every woman who prays or prophesies with her head unveiled brings shame unto her head there is no difference between her and a woman who has had her head shaved for if a woman is not veiled let her also have her hair cut short but if it is shameful for a woman to wear her hair cut short or to have her head shaved then here we go here we go listen then let her be veiled so this is the apostle paul saying hey if it's a shame for a woman to have her head cut uh, or if it's a shame for a woman to have her head shaved, then let her be veiled. And let me tell you something. Uh, nine times out of ten, a woman doesn't want her head shaved. <laughs> I mean, come, come on, I'm married. I'm married. And because I'm married, I live with a woman. And my wife and my daughters are all about their hair especially my daughters they're in this stage where they 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 love their hair they they just are in the mirror 24 7 with their hair and um playing with it playing with their look different styles and if i said one day uh, i'm gonna cut your hair ball oh i would not only hear it from them but from their mother and from the community around me why in the world did you cut that girl that would be abuse in, in some people's eyes so it is a shame even today for a woman to be you know for her hair to be cut bald and uh but but here the apostle paul is saying if, if that is a shameful thing it's also shameful for her to pray or prophesy with her hair uncovered so it says let her be veiled and that is verse six let her be veiled for a man indeed, verse 7, for a man indeed should not have his head veiled. Now, it's a shame for a man to have his head veiled. It says this, it says, because he is the image of glory. Uh, he's the image and the glory of God. And the woman is the glory of man. For a man was not made from woman, but a woman from man. And indeed, man was not created for the sake of the woman but woman for the sake of the man the reason a woman should show her veiling i'm sorry the reason a woman should show by veiling her head that she is under the authority has to do with the angels so basically what he's saying is is that this whole reason that a woman has to veil her head is because of something with the angels there is something there is a principle there is a concept there is a construct that um especially this is what the early church believed that a woman has to veil her head and it has something to do with the angels okay it says verse 11 nevertheless in union with the Lord, neither is woman independent of man, nor is man independent of woman. For as the woman was made from the man, so also the man is now born through the woman. But everything is from God. Verse 13. Decide for yourselves, is it appropriate for a woman to pray to God when she is unveiled? Now, Verse 13 is not giving them the choice. 
whether to veil their head or whether not to veil their head. He is really, this question is really, you know, um, rhetorical. He says, you judge, you judge, based off of what I just told you, you judge. Not only that, but he said in the beginning, he said, be imitators, be followers of me as I follow Christ. And then he said later, he said that a woman should not pray or prophesy. He gave a clear instruction. A woman should not pray or prophesy with her hair uncovered. And then after all that, after he told you to be obedient, to follow him as you follow Christ, and after he told you the commandment that he had given you to cover your head, this is what he says. He said, now you judge within yourself. He's not saying giving you a choice, but it's rhetorical. Uh, Paul was very sarcastic. He was a sarcastic person. You can tell in his writings. It says in verse 14, doesn't the nature of things itself see what this is how you know that this is a rhetorical question because he 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 says decide in yourselves and then he begins to help you decide he says doesn't the nature of things itself teach you that a man who wears his hair long degrades himself but a woman who wears her hair long enhances her appearance because her hair has been given to her as a cover and that is where we find the discrepancy because he says right there that her hair has been given to her as a covering but if 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 her hair has been given to her as a covering then and he's talking about hair coverings then why in the beginning would he say that a woman with long hair should cover her head there is a discord there. There is contention there within his own writings. You know why? Because he's arguing for both sides. But the second argument that he's making is a rhetorical argument because he's saying, hey, it's a shame for men to have long hair. It is a, a, a glory. It is a beautiful thing for a woman to have long hair. So a man should, uh, should because he is cutting his hair or his hair should be cut, he doesn't have to cover his hair. He is the image of God. But for a woman, her hair is long. She needs to cover her hair. Why? Because her hair is her glory. Not only that, but it shows that she submitted. Okay? Her hair is her glory, number one. It shows. So what is it? What's, what, what is the big deal about her hair being her glory? Well, the word of God says that no man shall glory in his presence. And so if a woman comes before the Almighty with her hair uh, uncovered while she's praying or while she's prophesying, then she's coming before the Lord, before the Lord in her own glory. Now, this is what the Word of God says about uh, 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 the glory that that other people, you know, have. The Word of God says it says that no flesh shall glory in His presence. And if no flesh shall glory in his presence, then of course God wants you to cover your head because he doesn't want you to glory in his presence. Because a glorying is a form of, 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 of pride. It's a, it's a form of, 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 of being proud about what you got going on. And God has this rule down on the inside of him. And his rule is, um, whatever is, is is proud, if you're proud, I got to abase you. And so you never want to go into the presence of God proud because he's going to abase you. OK, so uh, if you go before the Lord with your head uncovered, then you're going before the Lord proud because your hair is your glory. So he says, listen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to veil it as a sign that you're submitted to me and it will give you power with the angels. OK, so here's what someone this doctrine um, and preachers teach. He says uh, back in the day when men were, you know, um, 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 uh, fresh before the Lord. And what I mean by that is that we were just getting into creation, all that different kind of stuff. Um, the angels came, the angels, the son of God came down and slept with the, the daughters of men. And um, and because of this, that's where you get giants and all that different kind of stuff and all that different kind of stuff. So you have that. OK, so when you uh, uh, the, the angels looked upon woman and they lusted. OK, so but when you have a head covering over your head, this is where the teaching uh, stems from. When you have a head covering over your head, this gives you power with the angels, meaning that it covers you from their lust. 
and it gives you the authority to speak to them with authority. And so just like a man can, um, you know, uh, control angels and give angels commands to do this and to do that in this atmosphere, when a woman has her hair covered, there's nothing that stops her from having that same power. And so it gives her power with the angels and it causes their, her relationship with the angels not to be strained because of their supposed lust for her. If that makes sense for you. And not only that, but it shows that she is in obedience and it shows that she is submitted to man or to whoever her covering is in the natural. OK, so um, not only not only that, I mean, I mean, that's the way they teach it. OK, so that's the way they teach it. So here, Paul is pretty much teaching it the same way because he is establishing the doctrine of it in the New, in the New Testament church. And so this is what he says. He says, decide for yourselves. Is it appropriate for a woman to pray to God? She uh, pray to God when she is unveiled. And here's the here's the rhetorical part. Doesn't na the nature of things itself teach you that a man who wears his hair long degrades himself? Verse 15, but a woman who wears her hair long enhances her appearance because her hair has been given to her as a covering, as a, 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 a natural covering. It's her glory. OK, so it says in verse 16, however, if anyone wants to argue about it, the fact remains that we have no such custom, nor do the, the messianic communities of God. And so basically what he's saying here is, is, is that uh, you don't need to be arguing about it because I'm bringing this custom here. And and, and in King James, it says, uh, use the word contention. If there's any contention among you. OK, so basically Paul is saying this is what I'm establishing here. OK, and if this is what I'm establishing here, I expect you to be obedient. Verse 17 follows up, but in giving you this next instruction. So he was giving them instruction to cover your head. OK, there was no discrepancy there. There was no uh, 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 ambiguity there. He was giving them instruction. Women, when you pray, cover your head. Men, when you pray, do not cover your head. OK, so um, many people, especially in the Trinitarian Church, they will argue this based on the biblical concept based on the biblical um, uh, context they will argue that and it and and I myself doesn't I don't think that is arguable but because of their doctrine they will argue that so let's go into history and see what history says about head coverings okay and um, if you go to Wikipedia, let's just go for, to Wikipedia for this moment. I know a lot of theological scholars don't respect w Wikipedia, but we'll go to Wikipedia just for the masses. So they have a point of reference. And it says, if you just type in Wikipedia, if you type in Christian head coverings, this is what you'll find. It says, Christian head coverings is the veiling of the head by women in a variety of Christian traditions. Some cover only in public worship, while others believe they should cover their heads all the time. The biblical basis for head coverings is found in 1 Corinthians um, 11, 2 through 16. Though head coverings was practiced by most Christians until the 20th century and continued to be a custom in the church until the end of the 20th century, it is now a minority practice among contemporary Christians in the West. Here's the history. Throughout the centuries of church history, women have worn head coverings during the meeting of the church. That is when praying or prophesying um, takes place, uh, noted by 1 Corinthians 11 and 5. The style of the head covering varied at different points in history. The early church, Christian head coverings was unanimously practiced by women in the early church and this is why oneness people cover their heads because it was practiced by the early church and oneness wants the purest form the purest product of christianity this is what oneness wants they want the purest product of 
of, of what Christ produced from the cross. And that was um, early, early first century church doctrine. And it says that it was unanimous. It was a unanimous practice. OK, this is what Wikipedia says. Paul gave the instruction. Wikipedia says it was a unanimous practice. OK, and it says this was attested by multiple writers throughout the first several centuries of Christianity. The early Christian writer um, to tell Tertullian, sorry, of 150 to 220 A.D. OK, so this was uh, probably 70, close to 80 years after the destruction of um, Jerusalem, which was in 70 A.D. It says um, and, and explains in his day. So he's a writer. And he's explaining in his day. The Corinthian church was still practicing head coverings. This is only 150 years after Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians. He said, so too did the Corinthians themselves understand Paul. In fact, at this day, now this is the writer speaking. Uh, he said, so too did the Corinthians themselves um, understand Paul. In fact, at this day, the Corinthians do veil their virgins. And, and that's talking about their young women and their women in particular. Um, what the apostles taught their disciples approved. Clement of Alexandria uh, wrote this in uh, at, at one of people have a problem with Clement of Alexandria, but this is what he wrote. OK, just for a reference, uh, he says, woman and man are to go to church dis distinctly attired. For this is the wish of the word, since it is becoming for her to pray veiled. Another theologian um, from Rome wrote, wrote this. He said, um, uh, he wrote this while giving instruction to the church. Let all the women have their heads covered with opaque cloth. Um, the early church bears witness that in Rome, Antioch, and Africa, the custom of wearing head coverings were the norm. This is what Wikipedia is saying. They were the norm. Okay. So uh, later in the fourth century, so we go all the way to the fourth century, we're skipping hundreds of years, and we're going to the fourth, fourth century from the first century to the fourth century. And it says this writer in um, uh, 347 to 407 AD stated the business of whether to cover one's head was legislated by nature. When I say nature, I mean God, for he is the one who created nature. Take note, therefore, what great harm comes from overturning these boundaries. And don't tell me that this is a small sin. Hold it, hold it, hold it. This writer in the fourth century is equivalating that not covering your head is a sin. In the fourth century, he said it's a, it's a sin. It's not a small sin. And the reason why he's saying that is because he's saying that if you overturn the, the boundaries of what the apostles laid from the foundation, that overturning, that overriding is indeed itself a sin. You know why it's a sin? Because in the word of God, it says this. It says, um, uh, Jesus said at first, he said, not one jittle, not one jot nor tittle shall in no wise be um, cast away from the law till all be fulfilled, number one. And number two, all the believers in, in the early society believed that God's word was not to be changed, period. And there is the sin. If you change the instruction of the word, you sin. And this is what this guy in the fourth century is saying. And, um, Jerome, who, you know, one of people really have a problem with. This is what he says about head coverings, even him. Um, he noted that Christian women in Egypt and in Syria do not, and this is in quotations, go about with heads uncovered in defiance of the apostles' command. For they were a close-fitting cap 
for they wear, I'm sorry, a close fitting cap and a veil. So this is the different practices. You have people who cover their whole heads. You have people who just wear a veil and you have people who, because they were so, um, you know, so uh, strict on the, on, the, on the practice, they wore close fitting caps and they wore veils. They made sure that no hair was covered or was uncovered. And so um, um, Augustine of Hippo uh, wrote this in 400 AD. He writes, it is not becoming. That means it don't look good. Even in married women. What? To uncover their hair since the apostles commands women to keep their heads covered. Even early Christianity art also confirms that women wore head coverings during this period of time. And then thousands of years later in the Trinitarian churches in Western society, women everywhere are praying and prophesying with their heads uncovered. Now, I am going to be like Paul in this, this, this manner. You decide. You decide whether some kind of revelation came and it was sufficient for women to uncover their heads or keep their heads covered. I mean, to uncover their heads and to pray and prophesy with their heads uncovered and that is acceptable. Or decide whether in yourself um, that this is what was produced after the cross. Why isn't it still being followed today? I think it's a valid question. And um, this is, has nothing to do with men dominance or um, um, uh, uh, a man having control over a woman or you know any types of um, um, feminism or anything like that. This is the word. This is the word of God. And so Trinitarian versus oneness, I've done it again. I've brought the two together so that you can decide. Paul said it like this, be fully persuaded in your own mind. Now, if you are starting to, if you're get, being convicted, find a one's church somewhere. Find some place where, um, you know, that conviction is um, being executed upon. If there is no conviction in you about head coverings, that's between you and the Almighty. Just like everything is between everybody and the Almighty. That's the walk that the Almighty has you on. Let me tell you something. Head coverings isn't for everybody. And what do I mean by that? Some people are going to do what they want to do. And God's going to judge. And whether he judges um, in favor of them or whether he doesn't judge in favor of them, that's between them and God. Head coverings are for some people. Head coverings are not for other people. Um, in the oneness church, head coverings are for everybody. I, I, I come from a oneness church. I believe in oneness teaching. And so because I believe in these things, I believe a woman should have her hair covered um, and while she's praying or prophesying because that's what the Apostle Paul uh, instructed. That's what the early church did. And I want to follow uh, the word as we follow Christ. Okay, so this is Doug Derrick, and um, I'm just so glad that you were able to join me today. And um, we're going to end this segment um, with um, a oneness preacher talking about head coverings. Have a blessed day. Let me share this with you. Let me share this with you. The Bible says, No man can glory in my presence. <laughs> So people take this scripture and they get confused and say, well, her head, her hair is uncovering. Before we got down to this, where he began to break down how your hair is your glory, before all of that, he said to simply cover your head. So he's talking about two different things here. He's talking about one, cover your hair, which is on your head. Why? Because if you cover it, it's going to give you power over the angels. Why? Because in biblical days, remember the scripture said that the angels came down and had relations with the daughters of the earth? Well, how, they, they looked at the woman's hair as their glory and they lusted after her because of her hair. 
So God said if you cover it, the enemy can't deceive you no more. You know why all these women get deceived? There's more divorces in the church. There's more people have been married four or five times in the church. You know why? Because they ain't covering their head. They've been able to be deceived by the devil. But you got authority over the enemy and his devices when you cover your head. Why? Because it's a symbol of submission to God. You have humbled yourself. You covered, you tell God, I don't want you to notice me and my nakedness. I'm going to cover myself because you're too holy to even look at my filth. Yes, Lord. It's an honor. You should want to cover your head because it's an honor. There ought to be a blessing to you. Why? Because first of all, God revealed the word to you. And second of all, because he's so awesome, you don't want God to recognize you. How many of us can understand that if it wasn't for the blood, he'd look at us? Yes. Don't you know God don't really need to look at you because you ain't right? You want him to see the blood. And then you want him to see obedience. Yes, sir. Now, some of y'all, I know one person said to me, I, had to, I gotta get used to covering my head. And I, you know, I have a problem with that because you gotta get used to being saved. Anytime you gotta get used to doing something, it's because there's still a fight in you. You hear truth. You see the truth in the word. But now you're, you're willing to wait for God to make you comfortable with him. To be comfortable with his word. That means there's a fighting you against the word. And the Bible said in 1 John, it says, and in 2 Peter, 1 Peter, the second chapter, it says, for this cause, young men rest. That rest is not the R-E-S-T, it's the W. That means that they fight against the word. Why? Because it's different. The God of Jesus said, blessed are they that believe and have not seen. Why did he say that? Well, because those who have not seen and believe me, there's going to be no resistance in them. You're here. Now, I'm going to show you why he said about you here. Because for those who don't want to come in here, Isaiah the third chapter, let's read it. Go for it. Go for it. Isaiah the third chapter. Because let me tell you a secret. Can I share this with you? It was always rebelliousness in people from the beginning. It's in your nature to be rebellious because the enemy designed your DNA to go to hell, not to the kingdom. The third chapter. I can't think of what verse is starting. Let's go up verse 16. Let's go there. I'm going to tell y'all, you know why some of y'all hair fell out? Why some of y'all bald head? Why some of y'all... Sit down, boy, I'm talking. You know why some of y'all hair ain't growing? You got to keep trimming your edges. Because there's some rebelliousness in you. That was a curse on the people. Because they didn't want to be humble and be submissive. Bible said a woman had stretched out necks. In other words, she was haunting. She tried to look, she tried to be fashionable. Bible said she put anklets on her ankles. Put rings in her nose. Trying to have high heel shoes. It's in the scripture here. Even, even put on fashion glasses for fashion. You don't need them. You just put them on. Because you want to be seen. Y'all don't want to hear.